ಪರಿಜನ ಸೈನ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಗಣ ಲಿತಾ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖನ್ವಿತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗೆ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರೇ ವೃಷಾಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಾಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಪಂಚ ಕಲ್ಪತರು ವೃಷ್ಠಾ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ಪತಿತೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಬೋ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕಿಡ್ನಾಪ್ಸ್ ರುಕ್ಮಿಣಿ After hearing Rukmini's statement, Lord Krishna was very pleased. He immediately shook, shook hands with the Brahmana and said, My dear Brahmana, I am very glad to hear that Rukmini is anxious to marry me, since I am also anxious to get her hand. My mind is always absorbed in the thought of the daughter of Bhishmaka, and sometimes I cannot sleep at night because I am thinking of her. I, I can understand uh, that the marriage of Rukmini with Shish- Shishupala has been arranged by her elder brother in the spirit of animosity toward me so i am determined to give a good lesson to all of these princes just as fire is extracted and utilized after manipulating ordinary wood similarly after dealing with these demoniac princes i shall bring forth rukmini like fire from their midst krishna you upon being informed of the specific date of rukmini's marriage became anxious anxious to leave immediately he asked his driver daruka to harness the horses for his chariot and prepare to go to the kingdom of vitarpa the driver just after hearing this order brought krishna's four special horses the names and descriptions of these horses are mentioned in the padma purana the first one shaivya was green is the second sukriva was gray like ice the third mega mega pushpa was the color color of a new new cloud and the last balahaka was of ashen color when the horses were yoked and chariot and the chariot ready to go krishna helped the brahmana up and gave him a seat by his side immediately they started from dwaraka and within one night arrived at the province of uh, vitarpa Uh, the kingdom of dwaraka is situated in the western part of part, part of india and vitarpa is situated in the northern part they are separated by a distance of not less than 1000 miles but the horses were so fast that they reached their destination a town called kundina within one night or at most 12 hours king bishmaka was not very enthusiastic about handing his daughter over to shishupala but he was obliged obliged to accept the marriage marriage settlement due to his affectionate attachment for his eldest son who had negotiated it uh do i continue or what? yes Prabhu, you Does can some... read, you can read some more okay i'll read this page also as a matter of duty he was decorating the city for the marriage marriage ceremony and was acting in great earnestness to make it very successful Water was sprinkled all over the streets and the city was cleansed very nicely. Since India is situated in the tropical zone, uh, the atmosphere is always 
dry due to this dust always accumulates on the streets and roads so they must be so they must be spring with water at least once a day and in big cities like Calcutta twice a day the roads of Kundina were arranged with colored flags and festoons and gates were constructed constructed at particular crossings uh, the whole city was decorated very nicely the beauty of the city was en enhanced by the inhabitants both men and women who were dressed in washed cloth, 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 decorated with sandalwood, wood, full pearl necklaces and flower garlands. Incense was burning everywhere and fragrances like aguru scented in the scented the air. Priests and brahmanas were sumptuously fed and, according to ritualistic ceremony, were given sufficient wealth and cows in charity. Hey, what's, what's the I have a uh, difference between priest and brahmana. I'm not sure, Prabhu, actually. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, in this we, can way, ask, they were... we can ask this in the group. Yeah, maybe, yes. In this way, they were engaged in chanting Vedic hy hymns. The king's daughter, Rukmini, was ex exquisitely beautiful. She, she, uh, sorry. she was very clean and had beautiful teeth. The auspicious sacred girdle was tied on her wrist. She was given various types of jewelry to put on and long silken cloth to cover the upper and lower parts of her body. <clears throat> Grand priest gave her protection by chanting mantras from the Sama Veda, Rik Veda and Yajur Veda. After this, they chanted mantras from the Atarha Veda, Atarva Veda, and offered obla oblations in the fire to pacify the ominous conjunctions of different stars. King Pishmaka was very experienced in dealing with the Brahmanas and priests when such ceremonies were held. He specifically distinguished the Brahmanas by giving them large quantities of gold and silver, grains mixed with molasses, and cows decorated with golden ornaments. Damagosha. Oh, I need it needs to Damagosha Shishu, thank you, Prabhu. Damagosha Shishupala's father executed all kinds of ritualistic performances to invoke good fortune for his own family. Shishupala's father was known as Damagosha due to his superior ability to cut down unregulated citizens. Dama means curbing down and Gosha means famous, so he was famous for controlling the citizens. He, uh, Dama Gosha thought, oh, where was it? Dama Gosha thought that if Krishna came to disturb the marriage ceremony, he would certainly cut him down with his military power. Therefore, after performing the various auspicious ceremonies, Dama Gosha gathered his military divisions known as Madasravi. He took many elephants garlands with golden necklaces and many chariots and horses which were similarly decorated. It appeared that Damagosha, along with his son and other companions, was going to Kundina, not completely forgetting the marriage, but mainly intent on fighting. Thank you, Prabhu. And sorry about the pronunciation and messing up and everything. Oh, thank you so much, Prabhu. Question nice to read. Okay, Vivek, Prabhu, you can read next. Okay, Prabhu, thank you. Prabhu. When King Bishmaka learned that uh, Damagosha and his party were arriving, he left the city to receive them. Outside the city gate, there were many gardens where the guests were welcome to stay. In the Vedic system of marriage, the uh, breed, uh, sorry, breeds uh, father receives a large party of the um, groom breed breed groom and uh, accommodates them in a suitable place for two or three days until the marriage ceremony is performed. The party led by the Damagosha contained thousands of men, among whom the prominent kings and personalities were uh, Jarasandha, Tantavakra, uh, Vidurath, Viduratha, and uh, Poudan Rakha. Uh, it was an 
it was an open uh, secret that rukmini was meant to be married to krishna but that her elder's brother rukmini had arranged arranged her marriage to shishubala there was also some whispering uh, going on about a um, rumor that uh, rukmini had sent a messenger to krishna therefore the soldiers uh, suspected that krishna might cause a Uh, cause a disturbance by attempting to kidnap uh, Rukmini, even though they were not uh, without fear. They were all uh, prepared to give Krishna a nice of, um, fight in order to uh, prevent the girl from being taken away. She, uh, she, uh, Balram received the news uh, that uh, Krishna had left for Kondina, uh, complained only by Brahmana. He also heard that Shripala was there with a large number of soldiers suspecting that they would attack Krishna. Balram took uh, strong military divisions of chariots, infantry, uh, infantry um, houses, uh, sorry, horses and uh, elephants and arrived at the uh, precedent, 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 precinate oh. of uh, Kondina. Uh, meanwhile, inside the palace, uh, inside the palace, Guruji was expecting Krishna to arrive, but when neither he or he nor the Brahmana who took her uh, message appeared, she became full of anxiety and began to think how uh, unfortunate she was. There is only one night between today and my my marriage day, and still neither the Brahmana nor Shamasundara has returned. Uh, I cannot, uh, sorry, I cannot ascertain any reason for this. Having little hope, she thought perhaps Krishna had found um, a reason to become uh, dissatisfied and had uh, rejected her uh, uh, fair proposal. As a result, the Brahmana might have become disappointed and not come back. Although she was thinking of various causes for the delay, she expected them both at uh, every moment. Rukmini further began to Seeing the demigods such as Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and the goddess of Durga might have been displeased. It is generally said that the demigods become angry when they are not properly worshipped. For instance, when Indra found that the inhabitants of Vrindavan were not worshipped, him, Krishna, having stopped the Indra, was thinking that the sorry, 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 Indra. Uh, Indra Yajna. Uh, he became very angry and wanted to chastise them. Uh, those uh, uh, Rukmini was thinking that uh, since he she did not worship Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma very much, they might have become very uh, they they might have become angry and tried to frustrate her plan. Uh, similarly, she thought that the goddess Durga, the wife of the Lord Shiva, might have taken the side of her husband. Lord Shiva is known as Rudra. And his uh, wife is known as uh, Rudrani. Rudrani and Rudra refer to those who are very uh, accustomed to putting others in a distressed condition so they might cry forever. Rukmini was thinking of the goddess Durga as Girira, Girija. Girija, the daughter of the Himalayan mountains. The Himalayan mountains are very cold and hard. And she thought the, of the goddess Durga as um, hard-hearted and cold. It in her anxieties to see Krishna Rukmini was uh, Rukmini, who was after all still a child. Thought this was about. Uh, uh, different demigods that uh, gopis worship uh, the goddess uh, Katyayani to get uh, Krishna as their husband. Similarly, Rukmini was uh, thinking of the various types of demigods, not for the material benefit, but in respect to Krishna. Mitra praying to the demigods to achieve the favor of Krishna is not uh, irregular, and Rukmini was uh, fully absorbed in thoughts of Krishna, even though she pacified herself by thinking that the uh, time for Govinda to arrive had not yet expired. Uh, expired. Uh, Rukmini felt that she was hoping against hope. Uh, she began to shed the tears, and when they became more uh, forceful, she closed her eyes in uh, helplessness. Uh, well, Rukmini was in such deep thought, uh, auspicious uh, symptoms ap ap appeared in different parts of her body. Uh, trembling began, uh, began to occur in her left uh, eyelid. Uh, eyelid.
uh, and in her arms and uh, things. When trembling uh, occurs in these parts of the body, it is an auspicious sign indicating that um, something uh, really uh, sorry, look creative can be expected. Uh, expected. And just then, Rukmini, full of anxiety, saw the Brahmana messenger. Krishna, being being the super soul of all living entities, could understand Rukmini's anxiety. Therefore, he sent the Brahmana inside the palace to let her know that uh, he had arrived. When Rukmini saw the Brahmana, she thought uh, she would understand the auspicious trembling of her body and immediately became uh, elevated, became uh, elected, elated, uh, and elated. Uh, she is uh, smiled and inquired from him whether or not whether or not Krishna had uh, already come. The Brahmana replied that the son of the dynasty, Sri Krishna, had had arrived. He further um, encouraged her by saying that Krishna had promised to carry her away uh, without fail. Rukmini was so elated by the Brahmana's message that she wanted to give him in charity everything uh, she possessed. However. Finding uh, nothing suitable for presentation, she simply offered him a respectful obeisance of the significant, uh, the signifies this uh, significances of uh, offering respect for respectful obeisances to the superiority is that the one offering obeisances in is obliged uh, to the respected person. In other words, Rupini implied that she could remain ever grateful to the Brahmana. Anyone who gets the favor of the goddess of fortune as did this Brahmana, is uh, without a doubt always happy in material appearances. When King, uh, when King uh, uh, Bhishmaka heard that uh, Krishna and Balarama had come, she invited them to see the marriage ceremony of his daughter. Immediately, he arranged to receive them along with their soldiers in a suitable garden house. Uh, as was the Vedic uh, custom, the king offered uh, Krishna and uh, Balarama honey and fresh uh, washed cloth. She, he was uh, um, host, host, hospital, uh, sorry, hospital, uh, sorry, hospit, hospitable, hospitable. Not only to Krishna, Bal Krishna Balarama and King uh, King such as Janar Jarasandha, but he also received many other kings and princes according to their respective personal strength, age, and material uh, possessions. Out of curiosity and eagerness, the people of Kundalina uh, assembled before Krishna and Balarama and began to drink the nectar of their beauty with uh, tearful uh, eyes. And they offered them and their silent respects. Uh, and they were very pleased, uh, considering Lord Krishna the suitable match uh, for Rukmini. They were so eager to unite uh, Krishna, unite Krishna and uh, Rukmini that they began to pray for to the person of God. My dear Lord, if we have uh, performed any pious activity that you are satisfied with, uh, kindly be merciful upon uh, us and accept the hand of Rukmini. It appears that Rukmini was very popular princess. Uh, all uh, and all all the citizens, out of intense love for her, prayed for her mm, best fortune. Uh, fortune. In the mean, meantime, Rukmini, being very nicely dressed and protected by uh, bodyguards, have come out of the palace to visit the temple of Abhika. The Goddess of Durga. Uh, Deity worship uh, is that in the temple has been in uh, existence uh -huh. since the beginning of uh, Vedic culture. So there is a class of men described in the uh, book, um, described in the uh, Bhagavad Gita as the Veda 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 Ratha. They only believe in the Vedic ritualistic, ritualistic uh, ceremonies. But not in the temple worship. Such foolish people may take, uh, may her, uh, may here take note that uh, although this marriage of Krishna and Rukmini took place more than five thousand five five thousand years ago, there were uh, arrangements for time uh, for uh, temple worship in the Bhagavad Gita. The Lord says, "Yanti Deva Vrata Devan." The worshippers of the demigods attain the abode of the demigods. There were Many people who worships uh, worship the demigods and many who directly worship the supreme person of God. The system of demigod worship was directed mainly to Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Lord Ganesha, the 
the sun god and the goddess durga lord shiva and the what is durga where or she put even the even by the royal families you no know, or uh, royal families uh, other minor devi gods were worshipped by silly um, inferior people as far as the brahmanas and vaishnavas are concerned they simply worship lord vishnu the supreme personality of god in the bhagavad gita the worship of demi gods is condemned but uh, not forbidden there is there it is clearly stated that the less intelligent class of men worship the different kinds of demi gods for material benefit on the other hand even though Uh, rukmini was the goddess of fortune and she went to the temple of the goddess of durga because the family deity was worshipped there in the uh, shrimad bhagavatam it is stated that the rukmini was proceeding uh, towards the temple of the goddess durga within her art she was uh, always th- uh, thinking hmm. she was always thinking of l- the lotus feet of krishna therefore when rukmini went to the temple it was not with the intention of an ordinary person who goes to beg for material benefits for uh, uh, her uh, only st- target was krishna when people go to the temple uh, of a demigod the objective is actually krishna since it is it is he who empowers the demigods to provide material benefits as rukmini uh, proceeded toward the temple she was very silent and grave uh, her mother and her girlfriend uh, were by her side and the f- wife of uh, wife of a brahmana was in the center surrounding her uh, were royal body gods uh, this custom of a would be breed uh, breed going to the temple of the yam god is still practiced in the india as the procession continue, uh, continued various uh, musical sounds were heard drums conchs and bugles uh, of uh, different size uh, sizes such as uh, pan panavas uh, turias turias and uh, bihiris can uh, combine the music some ambala bisans jay shila roba they are very late today like i got to the temple Yes, so we'll and... yeah. yes, so we're continuing. Yes, bro. I'm reading okay. five minutes. In two minutes, I will give a chance for you. Sure, sure. Uh, can, uh, can combined to make a sound which was not only auspicious but very sweet to hear. And there were thousands of wives of respectable brahmanas present. These women were all dressed very nicely with suitable ornaments. They presented a rupini with flower garlands, sandal pole, and a variety of colorful garments to assist uh, her in worshiping Lord Shiva and Goddess of Durga. Some of these ladies were very old and knew uh, perfectly well how to chant prayers to the uh, goddess. the grand lord shiva so followed by rukmini and uh, others they led these prayers before the deity is pro we are to continue maybe prabhu is reading the earphone okay i will finish this page rukmini uh, offered her uh, prayers to the deity by saying my dear goddess durga i offer my respectful obeisances unto uh, you as you as well as to your child Uh, sorry children the goddess durga has four, four forms uh, children uh, four famous children two daughters the uh, goddess of fortune lakshmi and the goddess uh, goddess of learning saraswati saraswati lakshmi okay and the uh, two famous sons lord ganesha and lord kartikeya they are um, all uh, co- considering to be demigods and goddess uh, since the goddess durga is always worshiped along with her famous children Uh, rukmini specifi- uh, specifically offered her uh, respectful obeisances to the deity in that way however uh, here the uh, prayers were uh, different uh, ordinary people pray to the goddess durga for material wealth fame profit strength and so on rukmini however desired to have krishna for her husband and therefore prayed to deity to be pleased upon her and uh, bless her bless her and pleased upon her okay uh, since uh, she uh, desired only krishna her uh, worship of demigods is not uh, condemned well uh, rukmini was praying a variety of items were presented before the deity chief, uh, chief of which 
handkerchief of which were watered different uh, kinds of flames, incense, garments, garlands, and various uh, foodstuffs prepared with ghee, such as uh, puris and uh, kachoris. And there were also fruits, uh, sugar cane, betel nuts, and uh, spice offered uh, with great devotion Rukmini offered them to the deity according to the regulative principles directed by the old Brahmana ladies uh, after these ritualistic ceremony the, the ladies offered the remnants of foodstuffs to Rukmini as prasadam which she accepted with great respect then uh, Rukmini offered her uh, ob obeisances to the ladies and to the goddess Durga after the uh, after the Okay, after the business of uh, deity worship for was finished, Rukmini thought uh, uh, cash hold of the hand of one of her girlfriends and left the temple accompanied by the others. Yes, Prabhu, please you can continue. Look, look, this just last para you read now, three, four lines, just now. Hmm. Uh, like, uh, I just missed out, like, someone told, like, can you just uh, like say what is that? What was it? Like, uh, like uh, uh, Rukmini was caught hold of the hand of one of her girlfriends. Okay, like she worship uh, along with her sakis. No, no, like uh, in marriage, uh, of, before the marriage morning, they will go to the uh, temple. That is yeah. your, the culture. They will uh, go to the temple for uh, durga like uh, their families uh, like uh, no, like uh, their families uh, um deity like uh, what do we say yeah, kul devi kul devi uh, kul devi they go to the temple so rukmini uh, rukmini has to go to uh, temple uh, because of the, their families rituals so rukmini went to the the goddess of uh, uh, the learning the Durga Devi, uh, then uh, the, he prayed. Uh, she prayed to the Durga that uh, please bless me and uh, please show your mercy upon me uh, to so that I can marry to Krishna. So that in that way she worshipped. That that uh, for in the, if he worship that way, uh, like uh, offering obeisances to the Vaishnavas, they are so great Vaishnavas. So uh, she worshipped to the goddess of Durga with that uh, intention. Yeah, if uh, if uh, it is, uh, if we have that that intention in mind that uh, we have to uh, we want Krishna, then it is not the uh, like what we say. Uh, it is not the uh, demigod worship. Okay. Yes. Are you understand? Uh, so. After that, uh, she uh, like uh, he she want to uh, run, run out like uh, she want to escape from the uh, rituals. Uh, she uh, she ran away by keeping one hand like uh, uh, keeping with her one girlfriend with uh, support. She went also. Let's see what happens. Hare Krishna Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisances of glories to Srila Prabhupada. I bowl, I bowl. So here Rukmini is praying to Krishna for the life of her brother. Oh, Krishna like it. Prabhu, you know Prabhu. But like, so, why he like was killing like that? And like, was he like kind of interrupting? He cut his hair, Prabhu. So here is King Prabhu. Uh... <laughs> See, Chris, which is He's looking. What will happen? Hmm. Who, which first time it is? This is King Chukunda and Kala Yavana. Was this Prabhu after Kamsa, Prabhu? Kamsa's killing. Kala Yavana burned into ashes within a moment. 
Hmm. Uh, this Is this one the one like where one ratio is sitting in the cave and like uh, he has got a boon that whoever he will see that he'll burn and uh, like Krishna Krishna took him to into the cave like run showed uh, where we see now. Is it the same story or different? Yes, Prabhu. We read it yesterday. Okay. Here, the cook found a nice baby within the belly of fish. What is this baby? Oh, I'm just a baby. Belly of the fish. Is it like connected to Mahabharata story? Like that? What's her name? Satyavati. Yeah, yeah. Is it that? I don't remember, but it will be in the. It might be that only because yeah, you know, that's the only story. <laughs> no, soon we will we will see it yeah. tomorrow. I think. Okay, who will read from this part? Okay, then I'll read. <clears throat> okay, so all the princes and visitors who came to Kund, um, what is this? Kundina, okay. Kundina for marriage, and were assembled outside the temple to see Rukmini. The princes were especially very eager to see her because uh, they all actually thought that they would have Rukmini as their wife. Oh my God. So struck with Anda upon seeing Rukmini, they thought that she was like especially, especially manufactured by the creator to bewilder all the great chivalrous princes. Her body was well constructed, the middle portion of being thin. She had green eyes, pink lips and a beautiful full face, which was enhanced by her scattered hair and by different kinds of earrings around her feet. She wore jeweled locklets and body luster and beauty of Rukmini uh, appeared as if painted by an artist perfectly presenting beauty uh, following the description of great poets. The breast of Rukmini described like a little bit high, uh, little bit high indicating that she was just, just a youth and not much not more than 13 or 14 years old. Her beauty was uh, specifically intended to attract attention to Krishna. And although the princess uh, gazed upon her beautiful features, she was like not at all proud. Her eyes moved uh, restlessly and was very, when she smiled very simply, uh, like an innocent girl, her teeth just appeared like lotus flowers, uh, expecting Krishna to take her away. At any moment, she proceeded very slowly towards her home. Her legs moved just like a, Full grown swan and an ankle bells dinged very mildly. Like, what's this metaphor? Like, explaining this. And as I already explained, the great chivalrous princes who assembled there which were so overwhelmed by Rukmini's beauty that they uh, almost became unconscious, full of lust. They hopelessly desired Rukmini's hand, uh, comparing their own beauty uh, with hers. Shrimati Rukmini. However, was not interested in any of them. In her heart, she was simply expecting Krishna to come and carry her away. And she was just adjusting the ornaments on, ornaments on her left hand finger. She happened to look upon the princes and suddenly saw what uh, saw that Krishna was uh, present among them. Although Rukmini had never thought, never before seen Krishna, she was always thinking of him. Uh, thus, uh, she had no difficulty in recognizing him among the princely order. Krishna, not on not being concerned with the other princes, immediately took the op opportunity of placing Luk Rukmini on her, his chariot, uh, marked by a flag bearing an image of Garuda. He then proceeded slowly without fear, taking away Rukmini uh, exactly as the lion takes the deer from the midst of the jackals. Meanwhile, Balram appeared on the scene with the soldiers of the Yadu, Yadu dynasty. Jarasandh, who had many times experienced defeat by Krishna, uh, began to roar. How is this? How uh, Krishna is taking Rukmini away? From us without any opposition. What's the use of being so chivalrous fighters with arrows? My dear princess, just look, we are losing our reputation by, by this action. It is just like the jackal taking away the booty from the lion. So thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta purport of the 52nd chapter of Krishna. Krishna kidnaps Rukmini. Mm -hmm. yeah. so My like so level of metaphors is used in here. Hey. One, two, three, four. Hey. Yeah. Six. Okay. Hamid, they are calling you Prabhu. Oh, yeah. They speak to me. You see, being at the hostel, Prabhu. Yo. <clears throat> Should we read one more? Chapter? Okay, we can. Second, next one, now. Yeah. 
Okay, Lebohan Prabhu, do you want to start? No problem, Prabhu. Oh, Haribo. Okay, I'm just trying to tilt my phone. Is there how many pages left? Seven, I think. Seven. Like actually, like actually, bro, like how many chapters are there in this question book? Here we have only, I think, one left on this first volume. Or oh, two. First volume? Like how many volumes are there? Yeah, we have two chapters left. Oh, oh in the first volume. <laughs> Yeah, then we have second volume. Okay. Prabhu, how long have you been reading this book? So does it contain whole lifetime of Krishna? Like um all the past all the pastimes of Krishna and the material pastimes. here in this planet. Yeah. Okay, okay. But this is eight pages. Prabhu, it will be like thirty minutes, I think. It might be too late. Oh yes, and it's it's quarter past. It's chilly. It's eleven minutes past six now. Yes, Prabhu. Okay, we can read the Dhamma Dharashtakam translation at least, because that is nice one. Also, we oh, can. Oh, like the... is it that one? That's that has something like Sachi Ananda Rupam. Yes, Prabhu. Yes, yes, yes. Same thing. Same thing. Now every every day until two two days left. Oh, oh, like you saying we must read this? Yeah, now it's Kartik month, so we must read always this every day. Can I try the first line? I think yes. it's the only one that I can sing. <laughs> Should um, I start? Yes, Prabhu. Namami Svaram Sachi Ananda Rupam Lasat Kundalam Bokuli Prajamanam So Prabhu, I want to understand, should I read it twice, like, as it is? You can read one time, like the, like Sikh Sastakam. <clears throat> okay. Yeshuda Biyo Luka Lada Davanam Param Retasmanyanta Durtya Tyagopya Prabhu, okay, who wants the second Prabhu, one? can I read? Yes, Prabhu. I like sing. Okay. <laughs> I sing this daily, like two times a day. Okay, yeah. nice. Okay. So, Rudantam muhur netra yukmam rejantam karam bhoja yogmena shatanka netram muhu shwasa kampatri rekhanka kantha I don't know the tune, I don't know it at all, you know. I, I don't know how how to <laughs> this is. Yes, yes, Prabhu, yeah, I read or anyone? <laughs> Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Viti Drishwali la Bira Nanda Kunde Vagusham Nima Jantam Kyapayantam Tadi Yeshitagneshu Bhakter Jitatvam Puna Prematastam Shavriti Vande Bo Varam Deva Moksham Namuksha Vadimva Nachanyam Brineham Varesada Piha Idam teva purnata gopala balam sadame manaya savirastam kimanye. The Bhang Prabhu. Is it me? I don't even quite know it well, but let me try. Idam te mokam bogyam anandya nila Vritam kuntala isniga dharatas chakupya Muhus chumbitam bimbam raktishtarame Manasya virastam alam lakshalabye 
lost the tune there. Yes, bro. Namo Devadamu. Okay. You can go, Prabhu. Me, Prabhu. That's the actually one that I think I like. Oh, you can sing it then, Prabhu. Namo Devadamu Randandan Davishnu. Prasida Prabhu Dukha Jalabdi Magnam. Kripa Drishti Vrishtyati Dinam Badanu. Grehane Shamama Jam Edakshi Drishtya. Kubera Smajo Badda Murtyai Vajadvat. Tvaya Mochito Bhakti Bajau Kritocha. Tata Prema Bhaktim Svakam Me Prayacha. Namukshe Graho Mesti Damodreha. Um, can I read the last, last one? Yes, bro. Namaste. Okay, uh, so, Namaste Stutham Nesvuradipti Dhamne yeah. Prabhu, and I think the last line you sing it again eh? and the first one, but then when you sing it, yes, as... yes, actually, we sing two times like now uh, in one yeah. time, yeah, yeah. And, the, and I like the first line, eh? The first two lines that starts, yeah, Namami first two and also that Prem Bhakti one, Tatha Prem Bhakti, so oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just I just want Prem Bhakti and no other opulences and uh, no even not even moksha and you know, these things like yes, yes, so high level things. Yes. Yeah. The translation also. To the Supreme Lord whose form is the embodiment of eternal existence, knowledge and bliss, whose shark shaped earrings are swinging though and fro, who is beautifully shining in the divine realm of Gokula, who I do to the offense of breaking the path of yoga. That his mother was churning into butter and then stealing the butter that was kept hanging from a swing is quickly running from the wood and grinding mortar in fear of the mother Yashoda, but who has been caught from behind by her who ran after him with greater speed. To that supreme Lord Sri Dhammadar, I offer my humble base. Seeing the <clears throat> seeing the whipping stick in his hands, mother in mother's hand, he is crying and rubbing his eyes. Again and again with his two lotus hands. His eyes are filled with fear and the necklace of pearls around his neck, which is marked with three lines like a conch shell, is shaking because of his quick breathing due to crying. To this Supreme Lord, Sri Damundara, whose belly is bound not with robes but with his mother's pure love, I offer my humble obeisances. By such a by such childhood pastimes as this, he is drowning the inhabitants of Gokula in pools of ecstasy and is revealing to those devotees who are ab absorbed in knowledge of his supreme majesty and opulence that he is only conquered by devotees whose pure love is in in imbues with intimacy and is free from all conceptions of aware and reverence. With great love, I again offer my obeisances to Lord Damundara hundreds and hundreds of times. Haribu. Um, Prabhu, can I continue? Yes, Prabhu. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, Prabhu. So, oh Lord, although you are able to give all kinds of benedictions, I do not pray to you for the boon of impersonal liberation, not the highest liberation of eternal life in Vaikuntha, uh, nor any other boon which may be obtained by executing the nine processes of Bhakti. Oh Lord, I simply wish that this form of yours as Bal Gopal in Brindavan may ever be manifest in my heart. For what is the use to me of any other boon besides this? Oh, oh Lord, Eri can Prabhu. I continue? Ero Prabhu's turn. Because he knows singing. Oh, I, oh I, <laughs> I forgot him. Oh Lord, your lotus of faith, which is encircled by locks of soft black hair tinged with red, is kissed again and again by Mother Yasoda. And your lips are ready like the bimba fruit. May this beautiful vision of your lotus face be ever manifest in my heart. Thousands and thousands of other benedictions are of no use to me. Thank you, Prabhu. 
Aribol, O oh, Supreme God, I offer my obeisances unto you, O oh, Damundara, O oh, Ananda, O oh, Vishnu, O oh, Master, O oh, my Lord, be pleased upon me by showering your glance of mercy upon me. Deliver this poor ignorant fool who is immersed in an ocean of worldly sorrows and become visible to my eyes. Uh, Prabhu, can I read this? Yes, yes, read, read, Prabhu. You must hijack okay. me. <laughs> okay. O oh Lord Damodar, <laughs> just as the two sons of Kuver and Manigreev and Nalkuver were delivered from the curse of Narad and made into great devotees by you in your form as a baby tied with rope to a wooden grinding motor, in the same way, please give me to give me your own frame bhakti. I only long for this and I have no desire for any other kind of liberation. O oh Lord Damodar, I first of all first of all offer my obeisances to the brightly effulgent rope which binds your belly. And I then offer my obeisances to your belly, which is the abode of the great entire universe. I humbly bow down to your most beloved Srimati Radha Rani, and I offer all obeisances to you, the Supreme Lord who displays unlimited pastimes. I thought you were gonna eject once. <laughs> you take two cars. <laughs> and oh, yeah. the reason why I read it, it, it feels good actually to read this. I even feel it when I sing it in the morning and the, in the afternoon, in the late night, 7 p.m. What is this? What is this? <laughs> this is nice bhajan. Is this from Bhakti okay. Thakur. We can read this translation, it's really nice. This explains or yes, Prabhu. Okay, I am an impious sinner and have caused other great anxiety and trouble. Hmm. Bhaktivinoda Thakur is singing like this, but he's representing us, our situation. Oh, I have never hesitated to perform sinful act for my own enjoyment, devoid of all compassion, concerned only with my own selfish interest. I am remorseful, seeing other happy, others happy. I am a perpetual liar. And the misery of others is a source of great pleasure for me. The hmm. material desires this within the really core of my heart are un the material desires within the core of my heart are unlimited. I am wrathful, devoted to false pride and arrogance, intoxicated by vanity, and bewildered by worldly affairs, envy and egotism are the and ornaments I wear. What is vanity? Intoxicated by vanity. Isn't it? I know what isn't it Vani Prabhu? Like the same as Vani, or is it different? Excessive pride. Too much pride. Excessive pride, okay. Yeah. But Sebi Prabhu, you know Vani, ne? Eh? Oh yes, Prabhu, but this was English word. English word. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the next one is ruined by ruined by laziness and sleep. I resist all pious deeds, yet I am very active and enthusiastic to perform wicked acts for worldly fame and reputation, I engage in the practice of deceitfulness. Thus, I am destroyed by my own greed and I am always lustful. A vile, a vile wicked, wicked man, man rejected by godly oh. people is a constant offender. I am such a person devoid of all good works, forever inclined towards evil, worn out and wasted by I mean, various I mean. You want to eject three I mean, times I mean. for a week and read now? Now in old age, uh, deprived of all means of success, humbled and poor, Bhaktivinoda submits his tale of grief at the feet of Supreme Lord. See how humble Bhaktivinoda is. Yes, Prabhu. Position and he, he's saying like this. And what we are what thinking... What is the name of the song? <clears throat> Means, Prabhu, he is the realized person. He is the pure <laughs> devotee. And he's telling that we are fallen, we are lustful, we are prideful, we us, are this, we are that. that. He's talking about Prabhu. himself, actually. But imagine if this is him talking about himself and we are saying we are Vaishnava. So see... Oh how, my God. Uh, we are like Prabhu. demons. <laughs> yes, Prabhu. Prabhu, Bhakt Bhakti Vidona Kakura isn't that one who rejected a prostitute, who turned a prostitute into a pure devotee? No, that's Haridas Thakur. Oh, that's Haridas. Oh. Bhakti Vidona Thakur is the... Uh, Guru and father of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, Prabhupada's Guru. Yes, Prabhu. You see that that uh, the series that I'm watching, <laughs> I'm really grasping some Sanskrit words here, mm -hmm. like Aishman Bhava. You see things like that. Actually, okay. Prabhu, what I feel, 
the devotee as the higher and higher the devotion life increases a puppy person becomes humbler and humbler and he feels himself to be so fallen like actually this is the like yeah. bhav of him inner bhav but actually like he knows that he is a pure devotee but still he can't accept that because because as he was a normal person before materialist and <clears throat> like um, like prabhupad is yeah. also used to say no that i am not prabhupad i am not swami they just call me that no he is like you see like when you chant the i forgot it prabhu can you pronounce it for me shikshtakam like what shikshtakam oh yes shikshtakam shikshtakam yeah they they, they recited the <laughs> actually number 3 line 3 uh, prabhu can we tell me like that what actually uh, do they really feel the humble and like mm, like a uh, conditioned soul sort of. feeling or do they just express because to just to just like don't uh, get the pride into their heads and would uh, fall uh, consecutively no, they, really, they really feel like this that's the difference because we don't feel like the, we don't feel like the description of the song but we think okay this is how humbleness is but we never feel like that but they really feel they really like feel like that yes prabhu but, but how like uh, they are giving their lives into krishna's yes, lotus feet and then they are yeah that's the thing <clears throat> That's the I think the is. more you feel like that, Prabhu, the more you'll never fall. If you feel like that, like they feel lower than the straw and everything, you'll never fall from your position. But at, yes, uh, immediately when you get puff, puffed up, you're like us, new fights. Yes, Prabhu. And it usually happens because when one does something that is recognized, then he becomes puffed up. But these persons have done biggest things and they still think like this. so they I mean so it's just a prevention like actually they feel it from inside very humble uh, which is good also and uh, which is also acting as a prevention for for further fall downs which can happen yes, prabhu. yeah prabhu you said i mean what is it so it is this the it is this song oh, Sorry, Prabhu. It is. That's why Prabhu made video where he explains the whole meaning of this song. It's like two hours. Two oh, hours. The meaning of this. Oh my God. But this is the nicest uh, version of this that I know. I show like short, short like the beginning. Amar Jivan Sada Paperata. nahi ko punya le sha amajivan see this has got an only 200 views it's crazy <laughs> it's actually crazy the views only yes from this to you only two is it what prabhu I was saying, is it still new? The video? No, it's three years old. Oh, it's three years old. What yes. happened? <laughs> I don't know. People, th- these are hidden gems. Oh. सुखे दुखी सदा मिथ्य 
Here is the answer. It is from the book called Sharanagati. Sharanagati is one of the. These are really amazing. There are so many verses here. Five, six verses. Adirasa. The after you get it, a wise. It's still what follows that is also misery. And. Hey, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. There was this episode that. It was, I think, it was live, but then I watched it later, and I was shocked when I saw a question. I was like, I was the only one who asked the question, because I really, I forgot that I left the question there. Of course, at that time, the, I don't know any meaning. Like where? What happened? Pray to God. Now, was this? I asked the question like, what did Lord Krishna come to save Arjuna or Lord Devaki? In the la- in that Vavit Prabhu's last live. Oh. And then I left the live saying I'll finish the video later. So now when I came later, it, it came as a surprise because I forgot oh, about you, the question. Yeah, that's nice. That's very really nice. See this also. Prabhu, how do you, this how do you open? Oh, yes, how do you, yes. How do you open like uh, the text like this? You see he's opening Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> like where do you get it? This is, I, this is from iPad iPad, oh. So that one, the computer one that His Grace Sundar Gopal Prabhu uses, well, how can he get yeah, it? It's inside a computer. It's some app. It's some computer app, but this is for iPad and this is from App Store and this is like 20 euros or something like that. But I don't okay. have that. Yeah, I don't have that because I can just use the Google. So I just use that. Oh, yes, yes. See database. This? Antia Leela, chapter twenty twenty eight. See, see. Um, Prabhu, how long? How long will it go? I'm feeling a little sleepy. Uh, Prabhu, read this verse. That, yeah, this verse explains. Then, yeah, then you can. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so wherever there is a relationship in, of love of Godhead, its natural symptom is that the devotee does not think himself a devotee. Instead, he always thinks that he has not even a drop of love for Krishna. Yes, Prabhu. <laughs> no, what is yeah. this? And we think we love Krishna and Bhaktivinoda Thakur says like he's the lowest. What's he say? He so says, like so like this is false pride. What do you think? We have love for Krishna. Yes, Prabhu. We don't have actually yes. love. We are, we are, what we say, we, we have are, love. We, we are, are full of ourselves. Love. Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. If one I really love, are... then he would sub- uh, give everything for Krishna and he would run blindly to Krishna. But... Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. He'll become like a person who, like, world well, we won't understand, but yeah, like, he'll be like 100% free in his mind and like doing anything and mm-hmm. knowing that, yeah, Krishna will take care of everything. I just have to serve him mm-hmm. in uh, like always possible. Yes, Prabhu, see here in third word, it is exactly the same. We can read this and then we can stop. This is amazing purport. Okay, bro. I'm ready. Srila Bhakti Vinod Saraswati Thakur comments uh, that... Am I audible? Yeah, bro. Srila Bhakti Vinod Saraswati Thakur comments that persons who are actually very poor because they possess not even a drop of love of Godhead, uh, who are actually poor because they possess not even a drop of love of Godhead, or pure devotional service falsely ad- ad- advertise themselves as great devotees. Um, um, although they cannot at, uh, cannot at any time relish the transcendental bliss of devotional service, um, a class of so-called devotees known as Prakrita Sahajiyas sometimes uh, display devotional symptoms to exhibit their good fortune. They are pretending, however, because these uh, devotional features are only external. The Prakrita Sahajiyas uh, Sahajiyas uh, exhibit these symptoms um, to advertise their so-called advancement in the love of Krishna. But instead of praising the Prakrita Sahajiyas uh, for their symptoms of transcendental ecstasy, the pure devotees do not like to associate with them. It is not advice advisable. It is not advisable to equate the Prakrita Sahajiyas with pure devotees. Um, which, when one is actually advanced in ecstatic love of Krishna, he does not try to advertise himself. Instead, he endeavors more and more to render service to the Lord. Yeah, the Prakrita Sahajiyas sometimes criticize pure devotees by calling them philosophers, learned scholars, knowers of the truth, or minute observers, but not devotees. On the other hand, they depict themselves as the most advanced, transcendentally blissful devotees, deeply absorbed in devotional service and mad to taste transcendental mellows. 
they also describe uh, themselves as the most advanced devotees in spontaneous love as no words of transcendental mellows as the top most devotees in conjugal love of krishna and so on knowing the transcendental love of love nature well yeah not actually knowing the transcendental love nature of love of god they accept the material emotions to be indicative of advancement in this way they pollute the process of devotional service to try to become writers of vaishnava literature uh, they introduce their material conceptions of life into pure devotional service because their material conceptions they advertise themselves as knowers of transcendental mellows but they do not understand the transcendental nature of devotional service yes uh, so beautiful yeah. written yes prabhu yeah this is, yeah 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 this is really nice <laughs> Like, like, bro. It's this is logical. As a person who is a pure devotee, na, he just craves that is he serving Krishna or not. He doesn't even matter that a person is calling him devotee or not. That word devotee or bhakt, that too doesn't matter for him. He just matter for him is just how can I do seva? I just do seva every second. And this is also yeah. when the Iskon sells their own books, but they don't. Yes, bro. I'm feeling in the Iskon is like this only. to try to become writers of vaishnav literature they introduce their material conceptions of life into pure devotional service and this is when they write the yeah. book yeah uh, like, hey, prabhu you know, prabhu can i leave right now like it's 10 yeah, and i'm feeling sleepy and, yeah, and my so father much. is also calling i'll sleep now then you hey, prabhu thank you so much for association uh prabhu, can i leave yes prabhu ओके About at four o'clock. I came a little late today. I came about four thirty. Oh, yeah, I saw. I saw that. But it's not late. Four thirty. It was late. Yeah, but no, well, it was kind of. Yeah, but still, yeah, good that I came. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, yeah. See you at four. Haribo. You can. Haribo. You can chant this lepang, Prabhu. Should I start? Yes, Prabhu. चेतो दर्पणमर्जनम भवमहादवाग्निर्वापनम श्रेया कैवरचंद्रिका वितरनम विद्या वधु जीवन आनंद बुद्धिवर्धन प्रतिपद पूर्णमृतस्वादन सर्वात्मा स्नपन परम विचयते श्रीकृष्ण संकर्तन नमकारिबहुदानी भविष्य Ero you don't know this one Yuga itam nimeshena jaksusha pravrishya itam sunya itam jagat sarvam govinda virahena me dibu arbu baba daratam pinastuma madarshanan marmahatam karotu va yata tata va vidada tulam pato mat prananata tastu sevana praha Ero Ero Prabhu I'm sure you say This guy's calling me too much. Yeah. <laughs> what? What? I'm sure you're saying I'm calling you too much, too many times. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's good. It's good. Haribo. Bloody Jesus. Hello, Prabhu. Hello, Prabhu. My death for years and death. Life of repeated birth and death. 
this sankirtan moment is a prime benediction for humanity at large because it spreads the rays of the benediction moon it is the life of our transcendental knowledge it is it increases the version of transcendental breath and it enables the full to fully taste the nectar uh, for which we are uh, always anxious oh my lord your holy name alone can render all benediction to living beings and thus you have hundreds and millions of names like krishna and govinda in these transcendental names you have invested all your transcendental energies there are not even hard and fast rules for chanting these names oh my lord out of kindness you enable us to easily approach you by your holy name but i am so unfortunate that i have no attraction for them one should chant the holy name of the lord in a humble state of mind thinking oneself lower than the store in the street one should be more tolerant than a tree devoid of all sense of false prestige and should be ready to offer all respects to others in such a state of mind one can chant the holy name of the lord constantly oh, almighty lord i have no desire to accumulate wealth nor do i desire beautiful women nor do i want any number of followers i am only want your cause your devotion and service birth of the birth Oh, son, oh, son of, of Maharaj. Oh, no. no, yeah, you can continue, Prabhu. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Oh, son of Maharaj Ananda Krishna, I am your eternal servitor, yet somehow or other I have fallen into the ocean of birth and death. Please pick me up from this ocean of death and place me as one of the atoms at your lotus. Oh, my Lord, when will when will my eyes be decorated with tears of love flowing constantly when I chant your holy name? When will my voice choke up and when will the hairs of my body stand on end at the recitation of your name? Demi oh, Prabhu. Oh, Govinda, feeling your separation, I'm considering a moment to be like 12 years or more. Tears are flowing from eyes like torrents of rain and I'm feeling all vacant in the world in your absence. I know no one but Krishna as my Lord, and he shall remain so even if he handles me roughly by his embrace or makes me brokenhearted by not being present before me. He is completely free to do anything and everything, for he is always my worshipful, worshipful Lord, unconditionally. Haribo. Please, just come to Jai. First of all, since She's like an, uh, uh, like a, what is it? A Lebong Prabhu is uh, tra grabbing all the, <laughs> like uh, what do you say? <laughs> yes, uh, grabbing the all the <laughs> reading the. Yes, Prabhu, you always attack. Okay, <laughs> Prabhu, you can start. Uh, one, to blaspheme the devotees who have dedicated their lives for propagating the holy name of the Lord. Two, to consider the names of demigods like Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma to be equal or independent of the name of the Lord Vishnu. To, to disobey the orders of the spiritual master or thinking him as an ordinary person. To blaspheme the devotees, uh, sorry, to blaspheme the Vedic scriptures or the scriptures in the persons with the Vedic version. To consider the glories of chanting Hare Krishna to be an imagination. To give some interpretation to the holy name of the Lord. To commit sinful activities on the strength of the holy name. To consider the chanting of Hare Krishna as one of the auspicious ritualistic activities which are offered in the Vedas as fruitive activity, Karma Kanda. To instruct the faithless person about the glories of the holy name. Okay, Ero Prabhu, you have the last one. Ten, do not, do not have complete faith in the chanting of the holy name and to maintain material attachments even after understanding so many instructions on this matter. It is also an offense to be inattentive while chanting. Every devotee who claims to be Vaishnava must guard against these offenses in order to quickly achieve the desired success. Mm -hmm. Krishna Prema. Thank you so much, Prabhus, for joining me.